Hello there. I went and bought one of these, a Mega Engine CD-ROM player. Now, it's basically a Raspberry Pi with RetroArch. I don't know the difference, to be honest, whether it's operating system and software or whatever. Uh, I'm not clued up. I just like to play games. I don't like to go into the technical spe specifics. Oh, words are failing me today. Anyway, uh, the joy of this one is that it also has a CD drive, so you can play physical Mega CD and um, Turbo Graphics uh, CD games as well. So I thought, oh, cool, awesome. So let's let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. So I thought I'd give you a, some opinions and what goes on basically. Um, the unit itself, pretty snazzy. Um, by the way, I am in no way sponsored by these guys because um, I do have quibbles with this um, box as it is. It's quite inaccessible for just people that just want to play games. Uh, if you're techie and in the know, yeah, cool, you can mess around with it to your heart's content. Uh, me, I'm an absolute buffoon, so I do struggle. Anyway, um, it has two USB drives, which for me isn't enough. You can plug in more. However, uh, if you want to put games on it and things like that and you need to edit stuff, um, well, that's a keyboard slot gone right there. Then obviously you've got your other joystick port, so you could do with another one. Also, bad spacing with these two because your CD drive gets in the way of your wires uh, when you're rejecting discs and things. Otherwise it's it's, it's quite snazzy, it's quite minimalist. Uh, on the back nothing exciting, headphone jack, HD port, micro USB cable and then your, your weirdy power button. Uh, with that it doesn't come with a HDMI cable, doesn't come with a power pack, uh, it doesn't come with a controller, so nothing. It does, however, if we get rid of you, comes with some repro games, it's quite nice. You've got KO Flying Squadron, which I would have never bought ever because I can't afford it. It's eight million pounds and your kidney and selling your dad. Um, but get it in the box. Also got uh, Super Air Bonk for the uh, Turbo CD. It's quite quite a good little shooter actually that one. It's decent. It's on the the mini as well, so uh, we'll see about playing that one. Um, for whatever reason, I got a copy of Sailor Moon, which I wasn't expecting. Came with all Titan freebies. You do get a few freebies in the box, but I'm not that bothered. And I did buy a version of Castlevania uh, Rondo of Blood. However, this one they were quite nice with it actually. They chucked in a cardboard sleeve with another disc with the game on, so I don't even have to open this one. That's quite nice. Anyway, the negatives. So, like me saying, it's a bit of a nightmare to sort of set up and get going. It does come with this little pocket guide, uh, all cutesy and fun. Uh, it does stretch out. However, all this stuff, it's useful in parts, not useful in others. Uh, there is a bit here talking about adding more ROM files, saying um, use micro USB cable, uh, USB cables, use a USB stick and it will automatically download the directory paths onto your stick, bang it in your PC, stick whatever games you want on onto the stick, plug it back in and it will automatically download. Now, uh, that for me didn't happen at all. I have spoken to the, the nice chaps there. Uh, they're actually really friendly, a uh, quick email away, and they've said that it's, it's worked every single time for whatever they're using, um, but uh, not me, so I can't say that it works. Also, some of the options, um, some of the steps, sorry, not options, some of the steps are a bit wrong. Like here, it's just telling you the pad they're trying to shill from another company and things. Um, personally, uh, controller-wise, things I've got working with it. PS4 controller, plug and play, straight away, worked. You just set up the buttons. It did, however, when I was first setting it up, when it's asking you to map all the buttons, it finds the controller, no problem. I did get stuck and froze quite a few times on the actual um, quit screen when you put all the buttons in. I did have to force reboot it several times with the power because the off button doesn't work. On, well, the off button doesn't work because it's an on button, not an off button. You actually turn the machine off through the settings on the actual system. Anyway, PS4 pad. I've also got 360 pad wired, because that's the best way to go, 360 pads are bulletproof. Would like one with a better beat pad, however. Not quite got a banana working yet. Here's a question, would you eat the banana? How, how, how ripe does it need to be before you say no thank you? Anyway, we're not here to discuss bananas. And a bit of an essential, it says it's not. 
how are they? I am um, keyboard. One of your chavy light up, go faster keyboards. Um, that I found absolutely essential if you want to start downloading games and putting ROMs on. Now then, um, don't condone downloading games unless you've got physical copies. However, if you priced out the market, like I said in a previous video, download them. If someone's selling something for £8 million on eBay and you physically can't afford it, I have absolutely no problem with you downloading it. So that, for example. All these games should be available as download services from their companies anyway. Um, it, if they're not, you can't make money. So if you can't make money, then you've no option um, but to download them, um, in my eyes. Also got as well, when you are downloading games, it did come with this little card that tells you controls and folder locations and things. Did find it quite useful, however, for me, it doesn't really explain what you use it on. I would have liked, because I, I am an idiot, self-confessed, I would like a little step-by-step -step guide of click here, do this, do this, do this, do this. So my USB files, when trying to install them, uh, doesn't do it automatically at all for me. So jump cuts will go through the actual steps, It'll just show you the sort of screens that you use it on. These will be playing now. Is None of that to me makes sense. Um, I'm not an old DOS guy. I don't understand directories and root files. I know they're quite straightforward. Uh, I have literally spent this morning and last night going through them and seeing how to get the games on. But it says in the instructions, clear as day, this will do it manually for you. Like again, they've said it will. For me, not the case. Doesn't do it. So let's have a quick look at the actual games. Let's go for a few games. I have put more games on. Do own the majority of them. So before anyone calls copyright claims and all the rest. So obviously the most important feature is the CD drive. So here it is running Rondo of Blood. Basically you go into a menu and once you've got the disc in, it can take a little while because if you can click on it and it says load disc and you tap on it and you pick the drive, it might say there's no disc present. Obviously it's still reading the disc and trying to sort itself out. But once you get going, absolutely fine, no problems. Did have one massive problem however. Um, there's no eject button. Nothing at all. So you have to do the eject through the main menu or through one of the menus. The menus themselves are another sort of problem with this is that there's menus all over the place. There's hidden menus and secret menus and some of the ones in the instructions where it says go on to XYZ menu doesn't actually tell you how to get to that menu. I got a disc stuck. So I wanted to play Streets of Rage in all its CD glory, um, but my disc is knackered. Uh, I do blame my girlfriend, it's her copy uh, that she had as a kid. Anyway, um, I was playing it yesterday, absolutely fine. Came to play it today again, because I wanted to finish it, because I had to run off and do stuff, because I'm a grown-up, not allowed to play games forever all day. And it froze, well it didn't freeze, but you could hear the system trying to work out the disc, as in it couldn't sort of read something, and then you could hear it and hear it and hear it. So you go on to load disc and it say no disc present, Right, okay, so we'll try and eject it. Uh, go and eject it, it goes through the process on the screen. That's the only way you can see it's going to eject, and then it should spit the disc out. It didn't, it just kept it. So I switched the machine off, switched it back on again, so you go through the, all the rigmarole of the menus, instead of just an off button on the main screen, that would be massively helpful. And went to eject again, and luckily it came out. Now. I'm calling it lucky because for me, if there's no physical way to get the disc out, what if it just gets stuck forever? Uh, I'm sure the guys at um, PCE Works, they would sort it out or some description like that. Um, but as far as I'm aware, they're based in Germany, so posting it off and doing things like that just to get a disc out, I guess. Um, I don't really know the company that well, so I can't say what their policies are on things like that. Um, but from my dealings with them, they've been more than amicable, really nice chaps. And um, there's filters. There's menus, things like that. Um, muck around with it. Most of these sort of menus and screens and things, I know nothing about. Now, not saying that someone who gets one of these would like these different things. For me, just want to play a load of games, buy some 
sort of uh, mega CD games and TurboGrafx games that I never played before uh, on CD. Love that. Uh, I can finally get a copy of Snatcher in English. I'm um, going to have to go the, the dirty way of getting a Reaper on that one. Um, but again, not paying £8 million for a Japanese copy, no point. But yeah, look, looking forward to that. But there's so many options. And if we just go through this directory as well, um, basically this is where all your sort of ROMs live and your games and things. And it's you just, I just, for me personally, I just need a guide on how to do it and what to do and where to go and the buttons that you need to press. In the pack, there's not enough information at all. The website, there's no information on there as well. They've got a couple of demo videos that you have to download through a torrent, which I don't use torrents. So I'm, I'm at a loss, essentially, uh, on getting some of these things working without contacting them directly. I have had a couple of people sort of check in and look at a few things with me. So Ollie, thank you, mate. Much appreciated. I know you said you didn't do anything, but you were there for a chuckle anyway. We had a laugh getting it all up and running. But yeah, that's sort of a few impressions of the Mega Engine for me. It's going to be a fun piece of kit. I just need to figure out how to work it properly.